This episode of This Week in MMO is brought to you by World of Tanks. To try it out absolutely 100%, 1,000%, 1,000,000% 1, free, just head on over to gboffer.com slash tanks. Blow things up. What's up, everybody, and welcome to This Week in MMO, episode uh, 206 for October 9th, 2014. I'm Gary Gannon. Joining me from the GBTV crew, Mr. Troy Blackburn. How are you, sir? Uh, I've got to admit, I'm a bit of a sad, sad puppy this week. Uh, finished up Shadow of Mordor just in time to jump into Rift's Nightmare Tide expansion, and it's delayed. Oh, we were, like, everything else in the we were supposed to be talking about that this week, and I was so looking forward to getting Rift back on the show. Extended open beta, which is fine. Look, don't get me wrong. I'm not knocking the game. If it needs to be delayed to be fixed and be right, by all means do it. I, that doesn't stop me from being a little sad that I'm not playing it right now, though. Man, Troy just, like just starting out the industry this week. Troy just starting out the show on a positive note. He's like, "Hello, everybody," <laughs> and I'm depressed. How are you today? Uh, I wish I was playing Rift. Well, I'm sure the trying people are happy. Then you look how much you love the game that you've been looking forward to it. So you want to play? So that's right. I did have the right. uh, JKK, Justin Kennedy joining us as well. Yes, yes. Just playing a little bit of games here and there. Um, Heroes opened back up this week, so yes. you don't have Rift, but I've got Heroes to play. Ooh, zing. I seen you log into that the other night, and I come about this close to sending you a dirty message. <laughs> That's right. You Ooh, don't have dirty message. message. Yeah, it came across on Raptor, and uh, I was like, oh, oh, no, he is not in that game. <laughs> Uh, a couple of quick announcements before we uh, start the show today. Uh, for one, some of you following me on Twitter and stuff like that may have heard me talking about um, a new website we've been working on, and it is officially launched. It is called blacktriangle.com. Go check it out if you're interested in anything strange, the weird, UFOs, Ebola, uh, ponies walking into... The police station craziness. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really fun site. Go check it out. Blacktriangle.com is the website. Uh, there's a Facebook page up. We really do appreciate it if you guys uh, can follow us on Facebook and Twitter and all that good stuff. Um, the links for the Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram are right at the very, very top of the page. So check it out. Launch that. Have a lot of fun with that site. And uh, I think you'll really enjoy it. So give it a shot. It's uh, blacktriangle.com. So we launched that. That was big news. Got a new camera angle. That's new news for this week. Going with a little <laughs> bit of a different style. It's news, right? This is news. Isn't there a new show coming along with this Black Triangle site too? There is, and that was partially why this camera angle changed. So we are going to be doing a Black Triangle show, podcast, a uh, weekly show. It is with myself, uh, with uh, Coltrane, who you may know from Convert to Raid, the World of Warcraft show, and uh, Rob, who is only known as Rob. We don't know that much more about him. But we, uh, we did actually episode one of a pilot episode on Monday, it's really good. Really happy with it. Hopefully, we're, we're talking right now about maybe even putting it out. We didn't plan on putting it out. We were just planning on like, let's do a run through and kind of see how this goes and get our, you know, get our feet wet. Um, but we all really like it. So that may be going out. I'm not sure, but expect that soon. Hopefully I can get it to you guys. We have really interesting conversation about remote viewing, which RV is just incredibly mind blowing. If you don't know about it, well, <laughs> wait for the show. Um, so that's happening. Um, Coltrane's actually in studio with me, which is fun for that show. So adds a little bit to it. Uh, so we decided to change up some camera stuff and things like that. Uh, so got that all rolling. Uh, like I said, we do appreciate uh, if you guys follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that good stuff on social. It really does help us spread the word and uh, help us grow. If you like the site, uh, really please help, uh, help share stories and things like that. If you share stories on your Facebook and Twitter and things like that, it helps us a ton to just get the word out on a new site. It's always hard launching a new website and getting the word out and people to know that it exists. So it's not an easy thing, but I know there's a lot of you watching the show out there. And if, uh, if you guys see a story that you like on it, uh, please, uh, click the old, uh, 
the Facebook. The Facebook is the best one. I'd say Facebook is the sharing is probably the, 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 the most viral kind of way of sending stuff. Twitter after that, for sure. Um, all right, let's jump into some uh, some MMORPG talk. So the big news just dropped today. Uh, BlizzCon have uh, released the uh, their map and their schedule for BlizzCon. Getting ready for the BlizzCon. Yeah. Get everyone pumped up, right? Get BlizzCon everyone pumped hype. up. BlizzCon hype. I should uh, mention really quickly, uh, yeah, you guys, uh, we'll, we'll get a post up very soon about this, but uh, we are doing the uh, live streaming uh, our BlizzCon party with Zam. I saw that's bigger this year. Like it they is have, bigger they this year. They rented out the inside as well. It is. So they've they've rented as much space as they can possibly rent the entire pool area and the inside, so you can pack more of you people in. We just want all of you to come to the party. We hate the fact because every it's like the third, fourth year we've done it now. The worst feeling is when you know it's 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 the coolest party at BlizzCon. I mean, that's there really is. There really is no better party. Um, and it sucks when there's always people left outside in a line trying to get in. The fire marshal is standing there going like, nope, you guys are at capacity. And they do. They, they show up every year and they stand there and they count. They walk around the pool and everything and count everybody. So hopefully we can get more of you people in there this year. Um, you don't need a, a BlizzCon ticket to come to the party, by the way. If you are in the Anaheim area, it's on Thursday. Uh, what is Thursday? The 6th? I don't have a calendar in front of me. It's the Thursday. Um What's BlizzCon starts? BlizzCon starts yeah, Friday the seventh. So the seventh. So it's Thursday the sixth. Uh, we'll put up a post on Game Breaker announce uh, you know with all the information and things like that. But yeah, if you get there early, I would say definitely get there early. Even though we've got more space this year, I would still get there early. Beat the line because if you don't, you guys stand on line and wait for people to actually leave the party for us to let more people into the party, which is not super fun. But yeah, you, you, more. Even, you could even tell on camera last year that place was just packed. Oh, yeah. You got to beat the first line so you can stand in line for the drinks. Oh, we did good last year. There wasn't <laughs> that many lines for drinks. They had a lot of, uh, they set up a lot of extra kiosks for drinks all around the pool and stuff. So yeah. the first year was a little bit intense and there was a lot of lines. Second year, they said, no, 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 no. We need more. We need more bars. We need more alcohol. And they were like, okay, sure. So I know they've got like photo booth set up. Uh, gonna be doing like a whole photo thing going on there. We've got the show being live streamed, bunch of guests, a lot of fun going on there. Uh, we've got a parody. We've got some like performance stuff going on, bunch of giveaways. I know there's a, I've seen the list of stuff that they're going to be giving away. Hopefully I won't throw anything out this year and hurt anybody like I did last year. And people who are just like you partying around. Exactly. <laughs> Everybody just talking about wow. So that's Thursday on the sixth. So definitely, if you're in the area, and if you even if you don't like I said, even if you don't have a BlizzCon ticket, you're more than welcome to come down to the party. You do not need to have a BlizzCon pass, uh, and come by and say hi because we'd love to uh, love to chill. It's always a good time at the Annabella see everybody once a year for the BlizzCon. So the the um the the 2014 map and schedule uh, is now out. Obviously, I think I think well, I wouldn't say obviously, but I think one of the big uh, things that we've all been speculating about, uh, which is now on the list officially, is the Warcraft movie presentation, which is going to be on Friday, day, day so, one. Which was I was a little surprised to see that. I thought you know maybe if that's their big pop for the week for the weekend that that would like you know they'd be kind of finish up with that. But no, two fifteen p.m. on Friday, Friday the first day. I mean, opening ceremonies and then boom, Warcraft movie. So you want to know my theory on that? Yes, by all means. Press doesn't work on the weekends. <laughs> Got to get that info out, baby. <laughs> by 245, <laughs> blogs and video game websites better be posting about the Warcraft movie. That's probably <laughs> why. Everybody, every site out there is going to be clamoring for some info on the movie, and that's gonna, that stuff's going to hit super It'll fast. It'll sit there all weekend. That yes, it will. it will. There it is. Yep, 2 which p.m. Is, which is a good sign. They're actually going to give us something like new to show this time around too, like something we can actually give people instead of oh they talked about it, but we can't really tell you what happened in there because we're not allowed to. Yeah. Oh yeah, that was annoying as heck. So yeah, ho hopefully they have the trailer for everyone to see that didn't get to see it. We hope. Hopefully it's on the virtual ticket. As well. Do you think you wait? You, you you're wait. Uh, let me back. You're thinking it's going to be the trailer that they showed at Comic Con because I'm almost expecting a new trailer. I mean, now they've shot the movie. They've got all that footage. Why would they show a trailer? <laughs> they showed that trailer that they showed at Comic Con and no one got to see unless you were there. 
I don't even know what it was, but I imagine it had to be some sort of CGI esque sort of thing with because I don't think anything was shot at that point, was it? I don't know. I don't. I don't think so at that point. I think they were like beginning like pre production or something. But yeah, I, I'm with Gary on this one. I think this is going to be something nobody has seen before, and, and likely a little something from the actual movie footage itself. Either that, or they specifically did something while they were shooting movie footage that they intended to use for BlizzCon. We're, we, surely we're going to get something new and exciting that no, even though a lot of us haven't seen the Comic-Con thing, surely we're going to get something that probably nobody has seen at this point. That well, Comic-Con trailer is packed with surprises. What's the, what's the surprises here? Other than like, obviously a trailer might be a surprise. What else are they going to throw at us? Ooh, it does. It says, please join the Warcraft movie director, Duncan Jones, alongside Blizzard's Chris Metzen as they give attendees and viewers at home an exclusive presentation packed with surprises. That's so 2.15 on Friday. Yeah, you got to be tuned in for that hour long presentation. Yeah. That's going to be the that's the, that's the one not to miss right there. Um, going back to that, just thinking about that for a second. God, that trailer from Comic-Con has to be one of the best guarded secrets ever. Did that ever leak? Like, how did no one flip cam on their phone, smartphone, video that thing, and put that thing up on YouTube? Like, I, I've never seen it. I spent it. the whole next day looking around expecting to find it off of a phone or something. And I wasted an entire day going, this is out there somewhere. You know, yeah. I'm going to see it somewhere. It's just a matter of looking in the right spot. I, ne- I still to this day I've never seen it. Now, granted, I gave up after a couple of days. I was like, "Well, okay, I guess they're serious about this." <laughs> but yeah, I've still I, just, I have no idea what they showed. I know it's usually this is usually followed up with a like, I guess almost like a threat or an ultimatum. Like, if you all actually leak this, we'll never do anything like this again for it. And I, I guess these people who are norm who are regular attendees of these events like that they're probably like well i'm not gonna do this because it's kind of cool that we get this stuff whenever really come oh come on Justin, you have faith in the internet you have that much faith in the internet <laughs> they did it with the doctor who they did it with the doctor who trailer once too as well and, and people listen to them and, and, and nobody people... leaked it wow maybe there is hope for humanity i've given up well, we can, we can leave the people. We can leave the people we don't have hope for down in Texas. I've given up all hope for humanity, but maybe there's a glimmer of hope. People can still not leak the World of Warcraft trailer and the Doctor Who trailer. It's amazing. Nah, there, there, there's no hope. There's no there's hope. No hope. <laughs> there really isn't. Uh, but lots of cool stuff on here. I mean, that's definitely, I think, for me, the uh, that's that's the. Just the that's absolute, the like that. that's the main <laughs> one here. You got the opening ceremony. Uh, you've got a, you know, the bunch of cool stuff. I mean, there's a bunch of hero stuff going on. There's going to be the BlizzCon brawl. Uh, that's at 5 p.m. on Friday. Uh, where is that here? here? Heroes of the Storm exhibition semifinals. So that's going to be pretty cool to watch. So there's some competition stuff. Yeah, that's that going to be pretty awesome. The, uh, the BlizzCon brawl uh, consists of uh, two teams of like online personalities, like YouTubers. Uh, I don't think they've said who yet. Uh, I think all they've said is that it's going to just be like like some YouTubers playing the game, which will be fun to yeah. watch. What I'm really interested in seeing is the exhibition tournament. That's going to consist of some pro players, um, like uh, I think Cloud Nine. Players. Um, there were some other teams. That I had the list pulled up here, but I freaking lost it. So, so these pro players are like ex pro players from like League of Legends and stuff like that. <laughs> Probably, <laughs> they oh, they've announced. I think um, Fnatic. I think announced some of theirs, and they had a yeah Fnatic. That was one nice of them. list. Um, but yeah, there's Cloud Nine, Evil Geniuses, Fnatic, and Team Liquid all have a team in for this event in um, full tournament mode. So, so see how I, they play and see what happens. Too, as a guy who jo- enjoys watching Pro League of Legends play, I'm curious to see the difference between how you know we've all watched a f- you know the few people play it on Twitch or whatever, and then you're going to see the YouTubers play it who have probably played it quite a bit. I'm curious to see how it how what how big of a difference it makes when the pros get their hands on it. You know if they've had enough time to play with it and and sort of min max what they're what they're doing. I'm I just as the guy who enjoys that kind of stuff, just watching it. I like to watch it. I can't do it. I'm not that good, but I enjoy watching the pros get their hands on a game and absolutely changing the way it's played because they're that good at it and they they understand that much of the minute details uh, uh, of how the game works. So that's that's going to be really interesting to watch. The so, get their hands on it. so the fanatic team is Lamia or Lamia, whatever ex ex lol player, season one championship winner, Naniwa, the ex Starcraft two player, Ace of Spades and 
Um, for my insanity, Shushe, whoever that is, ex low player winner, and yeah, Saucer. Shushe, ex Shushe used to be, used so it's to a very be one of the weird best low players in the world. I don't know if these people have been playing together. This is the biggest thing that worries me about it is, are these teams put together for the PR stunt of it all? Absolutely. Or are these people actually, have these people actually been playing the game and actually can um, I, I, well, I, I, give us a good match? I'd be pretty confident to say that most of them are going to be practicing quite extensively. They don't want to get up there and look like idiots. I mean, these guys are pro players. So the last thing they want to do is get up there and be critiqued by people and, you know, saying that they absolutely <laughs> yeah. suck. Yeah, this, this rando I played with last night was better than that. What are these guys doing? They don't even know how the champions work. You, you don't want I'm, to get into that situation. Yeah, I'm pretty sure but, they're going to put on a pretty put good show. Specifically for PR purposes? Yes, absolutely. My hope is that because they are still that much mechanically better at anything that they can get their hands on than most people that we're going to see some some kind of unique takes on the gameplay. But just take their defense for a minute. They have to be put together for PR reasons because the game doesn't exist yet. So there's no teams yet to really talk of. So you have to put the teams together. So there's really, if they didn't put them together for a reason of BlizzCon, there would be no teams at all. So yes, of course there are, but there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, we want to see it being played. We want to see it being played, I think at this point, by people who really know how to play it. I think they're going to be the ones who can actually kind of communicate to all of us who aren't as good as they are if this game really has what it takes to be truly competitive and really good and really fun, I mean, you know, when we watch those guys play, that's what we're going to strive to play. So I think you can probably be able to learn a lot from the pro players. And mm-hmm. we haven't seen pro players play this game at all yet, right? We've only seen we've seen some of the shoutcasting stuff Not with heavily. one of the devs shoutcasting, but nothing like this. Yeah, yeah I've, I've never I've never seen anybody who plays a professional esport play this game and uh, anything other than just casually sitting down. Like, I'm going to play. You know, a few minutes of Heroes of the Storm. That that's about the extent that I've seen any sort of real pro player play. It was just in a very casual setting. Yeah, and then I, right now, as far as I want to know, are self proclaimed pro players or so, or um, individually like offshoot teams that have created themselves and stuff in preparation, but nobody that's of history that uh, knows that's played competitively. Yeah, that that you know is that much better than everybody else at other things they've played. This this will be the first time we've seen some recognizable you know names that we we've seen at least some point in their careers be that much better than everybody else. So uh, the floor plan is also out. They usually do a pretty similar sort of space uh, amount of space they actually consume is pretty much the norm. Uh, you can see your main stage here. Which is you know where the uh, the really big panels and uh, of course the concert at the end, which no one knows who it's going to be yet. Um, here and then back here, looks like you've got Hearthstone's got a very you know, the next largest area here of Hearthstone, uh, followed by it's kind of interesting. Hearth- Heroes isn't does not look all that big, but I guess you know they're doing these tournaments. But since the game's not launched yet, they're still kind of sitting here. You got all the World of Warcraft, but you got the World of Warcraft and Heroes st- stage here, and uh, World of Warcraft in the middle here, uh, and then you've got the BlizzCon store, which is always a highlight. You want to go buy your Blizzard swag. That, that Heroes um, of the Storm area is just the play session area, I and mean, that's the same place they had it last year, with all the computers that you go in and play. The tournament right. still takes place up there, just up in the top section. Right, this area here is for just play for everybody to walk up and actually just get online and play. This is going to be the area where everyone sits down and the stage is usually up against this back wall where everyone can watch the gameplay go on. Uh, StarCraft 2 and Diablo 3 has got this little section over here. Not sure what they're going to be showing there. Is this new? What is this over here? What is this StarCraft 2 tournament stage in a circle? Does that, am I... Am I I don't seem to remember feeling like the layout last time. That's the actual. Is that the actual arena? I don't know. This 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 kind of. I, am I am I? I don't know. Maybe somebody in chat room can tell me. I mean, I've walked around BlizzCon now three or four different times. I don't know if I've ever been in a circular room like this. I feel like no, there's it wasn't been open last year because last year the store was all along that wall. Right. It usually it usually went along this wall, I believe. I think that's and the then stop dome. there. Interesting. So that's interesting if they've actually opened it up. That is, yes, the best thing that's new as well in chat room. So, yeah, I believe the store was not along this wall. It was shifted down and came across this whole back wall here, or most of it. Um, this this looks to be completely 
new. So it looks like they're opening up a t- an entire new uh, StarCraft II tournament stage just for this. They've got a charity auction and something in here. Because, I, yeah, I definitely do not remember walking through another hallway there. Interesting. Getting a little bit bigger this year. Bigger than ever before. Confirmed right here live on Twimo. Wow, it'd be nice if I showed the. Uh, it'd be nice if I showed on camera what I was pointing out for the past ten minutes. Sorry about that. <laughs> I didn't realize it wasn't in the camera view. But this is what I've been talking about right here: is this circle, the circular room right here with this corridor. This, uh, yeah, I think we're like I'm like ninety nine point nine percent sure this has never been open before. The store, which is up here this year, usually was along this wall, and uh, this was all closed off. So looks like a whole new stage that they've added and a whole new area just for StarCraft. Yeah, it's in the yeah. arena. So yeah, that, that's the actual arena that you walk by when you're if you're walking to the um, entrance for BlizzCon and stuff. That's that huge arena there. So it's a dome. Well, there you go. BlizzCon obviously getting bigger this year. Getting, getting, getting bigger. All right, next up, let's talk about Ubisoft and a new MMO <laughs> car PG coming out. You guys are both super excited about called The Crew. Got pushed oh, back. Dog. What if the what? words like it? I'm trying to, I'm trying to gauge how, how much the word delayed. has gotten out. Yeah, so the big news obviously is that the crew got delayed. If you guys haven't been following the crew, it is I'm an MMO. I'm sure it got delayed because of consoles. Oh, you think the console po- like, uh, versions of it got delayed? Well, that's in the, yeah, they pushed it back, and then they're going to have a second closed beta for the consoles in November. Yeah, no, no mention of another PC beta at all. Yeah, PC's ready, I'm pretty sure. And then console's just like, well, consoles suck, so it's taking us a little bit longer to get this thing running good on it. Hey! <laughs> Did you yell at my PS4 and Xbox? Um, so the original date was November 11th. That was when everybody was going to get their hands on the crew. Now it's uh, being pushed back to uh, December 2nd. So a little less than a month, a little extra time. I don't, I don't know. to finish Assassin's Creed and Far Cry 4. This, this is true. All the good games are coming out. They're all coming soon. At least they're not still all piled on top of each other like they were, like it looked like they were going to be earlier in the year. Like, you know, delay, especially if they do it right and it launches and everything's smooth, that, that's fine. But there for a while, man, when we were started writing about release dates back in like August, October, and the beginning of November, I mean, I was beginning to figure out try to figure out how I was going to fit it all in. There was so much just like boom, 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 like right there on top of each other. Now it's all just spread out everywhere. And here I am. I got a week where there's nothing. And I'm, and I'm sad. <laughs> yeah, this does get to be that time of the year when everybody gets overwhelmed with uh, with the, the, the releases. So, um, yeah, so second closed beta on the PS4 and the Xbox One in November. Any, any information that you guys know of, of how to get in those betas? I've been in the PC one, but I don't know much about how to get in the console one, and I want to know. Frankly, I'm just asking you guys, I really want to know. It says closed, so I'm wondering if that means is the only people who's purchased it? I don't know. Is it pre-orders? I don't know. We'll check into that. I don't know. Maybe you have to pre-order. Maybe you can get on it. We should know this, but we don't because we're informed. Because it's console, nobody cares. That's it. We talk. I mean, we know. Well, we usually talk about PC games, and we knew exactly how to do the PC. I'm, I'm just looking at it now and being like, maybe I want to try this on a console. I don't know. I'll try it on my console. So, what's going on with the PS4 and the Xbox 360 versions, frames uh, FPS wise? Uh, so right now it's rumor. I couldn't find the actual proof here of this, but the idea is that possibly the PS4 version has been locked down to be the same as the Xbox version to 900 pixels, 30 frames per second. And this is on the, this isn't because they came out and said, here's what the crew is at this, um, which they've already announced, I think 30 frames per second. A while back, I think they said on consoles that it was going to be 30 frames per second. But the pixel thing is a new part of it. Um, but the reason apparently for this that people are believing this is going to be the same for the crew is because of an announcement that came out for Assassin's Creed Unity where they announced and said, we decided to lock them at the same specs to avoid all the debates and stuff. Ah, interesting. All so they the did. debates and stuff for two games that are nothing alike. Um, okay. Yeah, but I, I guess I could see what they're saying. Nothing to do with the game, but more to do with the people online just bitching and moaning when one console or one platform gets a higher frames per second and everybody feels you know superior and if, then the other half one, feel inferior and the gaming company is just like... What's that? It should get better performance. If one platform yeah. is superior, it should get better performance. 
now you just validate it to everybody who has the PS4. You just validate it to them <laughs> and gave them an argument going, you fucked up our game, Microsoft Xbox fans. You screwed it up. We could have had a better game, but because of you all, you screwed it up. Here's a new debate. I mean, it is kind of known at this point for, for hardcore gamers that the PS4 has got more horsepower, that's for sure. Yeah, I think that's pretty common knowledge now. I think it's pretty obvious. But uh, It has been for a while now. Yeah, so what's funny on this, though, is... So this is this came out a couple of days ago, and the internet went nuts with it. They're like, they're just getting mad, and Total Biscuit was on Twitter, so all every, everyone who is, agrees with him got mad, of course. And websites came out like, 900 pixels, 30 frames per second, what is going on here? Ubisoft comes out today and is like, no, 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 no. <laughs> we didn't reduce it. We developed it that way from the beginning on purpose. So they're like, as of now, the Assassin's Creed Unity is locked at 900 pixels. But why stop there? Which, when I was reading this, I was, I thought they were going to be like, we're going to upgrade it. No, no, they didn't upgrade it. That was like a preference to like, as if you were asking the question. And say they decided that we. But let me let me let me let me let me clarify for a second, so everybody can follow you. You're the quote you're talking about is actually about Assassin's Creed. Not yes. the crew. Yes. You're talking about yes. them saying Everything. that they developed this at 900 pixels. Is You're talking about Assassin's Creed now, so you're getting confused because you're jumping between games. We don't... Yeah, yeah, so the crew is not saying that... So the crew is not they they actually come out and say that they, they are even they're locking it down, have they? All we, they have, I, I couldn't find anything from the crew regarding specifically that it is locked down. However, everything on that I found from people is they've been asking questions for quite a while is the crew running at 900 pixels because it doesn't look 1080p. Ah. And that's what people were asking. There is, there's no... Is that including... A, what are they doing on PC? PC, I don't think, is locked down. And I think they already said no. on... They already said PC for the beta was 30 frames per second, but they're going to open it up for the launch version. They said it, they said it was just for that closed beta. They're, they're, gonna, they're wanting to get you to 60 frames or, or unlit whatever you can do frame wise on PC. As far as resolution goes, I really hope they have zero plans to screw with enforce a resolution of nine hundred. Ah, they wouldn't enforce a nine hundred resolution on a PC. That would just be crazy talk. No, that, that would be I wonder totally I wonder how much pressure I wonder how much pressure um, developers are getting right now from uh, from Microsoft about this. Because that's where this would come down from I feel like more than the game code the developers internally just saying we don't want debate. I think that I, I, my gut feeling is that they would want to release it on the highest uh, quality that they possibly could on either platform, um, but they may be getting they just actual. Don't want Xbox they, mad at them. Well, they well, might be getting actual. Did Microsoft like? Here's some money. Oh, they're not gonna, I got they're going to pay them. Don't insinuate <laughs> that. Gonna, oh, we'll pay you not to release the game on the other console. Uh, at, 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 at what is potentially possible. That's crazy talk. No, I don't think that's happening. That's, <laughs> I think, I think there might be something illegal about that, to be honest. Um, who knows, man, that'd be a bummer though. If they lock it down on the PS4, when it has the horsepower to actually go beyond that. Cause I'll be honest. I mean, if I play the, with playing the crew, I don't know. I'd like to get into this beta because I, I I'm playing Forza Horizon two right now on the three on the, the X Bone, and I absolutely love it. It's a brilliant game, um, and I don't know. Part of me is like, well, maybe I'll play the crew on a on a console instead of my PC. My PC can handle it, and of course, it can hook up a controller. But I don't know. Just maybe I would. But now that if it's gonna be locked down like this, I'm gonna be like, no. Yeah, I mean, if if you've got the choice and they're gonna lock it down, why would you not choose PC? That's that's how I played. I played it with a 360 controller plugged into my PC. It was phenomenal. I enjoyed it. Loved every second of it. No, no, well, no complaints from the PC department. No, PC players are just like, yep, PC master race once again. We keep telling you. Even, even when it was locked down to 30 frames per second, it was still fine. I mean, everything still ran fine. It can only get better. So, I I gotta say the one thing for the crew that I hope right now is that I do hope that they dial in. The uh, controls better. Those could. I, I feel like the last beta that we we got from them. I don't feel like the controls are really there. Got to be honest. And the crew. The crew. Um, to an extent, yes. I heard a lot of people kind of kind of felt that same way as well. To me, I was I was still I wanted to get further into the game than we had time to get into in that because it started feeling like it was to an extent, now don't get me wrong, but the controls probably could be dialed in a little more, but it felt like those starting cars were kind of meant yeah. to not be super controllable. And the, and the more your car upgraded, the, the better the controls felt and got. 
but like I said, I didn't get to play enough to to feel the difference between a starter car and a real what they considered a high end you know car to see what the controls felt like when this car is souped up and I'm supposed to be like having just precise control of it, which is something I'd want to get my hands on before I really kind of made that decision on whether or not those controls were acceptable or not. Well, if you guys are looking to pick up the crew, really quick plug, go ahead over to gboffer.com slash the guy at the crew. Get your deal on. Get your deal on. I think it's still 20%. I believe so. Speaking of deals, we're going to have a sick deal this weekend. Pay attention to game. Uh, I am I'm waiting for that. I'm waiting for it too. I was, I was getting ready to pre-order like yesterday and I oh, got good. the email. Sick deal this weekend. I was like, nope, I'll be waiting. All right. So uh, I don't have all the information as of yet, but... Um, at some point tomorrow, a post will go up on Game Breaker and we have an exclusive, exclusive, exclusive deal with Green Man Gaming. Uh, not only for The Evil Within, but uh, for a lot of other games. But it's going to be a deal you can't find anywhere else on the internet. And it's going to only be good through this weekend. So you're going to have to act fast. It's going to be like Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Poof, goes away Monday. That's so what we got going on. on Tuesday. Yeah, the release yes. is Tuesday for the Evil Within. Yeah, so that that's the big so, push. Everybody's talking about the Evil Within right now. Um, we will have um, a, we will have a code though. So basically, we'll have a, a a voucher code for you to save money on the Evil Within. The code will also work on a ton of other titles. Some will be excluded, but it will work on a ton of other titles as well. So if you're looking to pre-order anything or buy anything, you might want to wait just a few hours till we got our code up because we've got a deal going on for the weekend that nobody else has on the internet anywhere. So really excited to be working with the green man on that. Yeah, it's going to be cool. All right. Go ahead and start eating ramen noodles now and get ready to buy some games this weekend. That's it. (laughs) Just just use that code. Just start piling up games, uh, pawn games, pawn games, pawn games. Well, Troy, you could save some money and play some World of Tanks because it's completely free to play. Absolutely free. And you can get free stuff too. You can get free stuff. Yes. If uh, if when you sign up as a new account, Use the uh, invite code GBTV when you're signing up on your new account and you're going to get like a free tank. You're going to get some gold. You're going to get all kinds of free stuff just by using the invite code GBTV. So go over to gboffer.com slash tanks. Um, new updates coming. 9-3. Is it up yet? Let me check. I keep checking every day. It's so close. It's so close. Doesn't look like it's up yet. Got American Pride Weekend, though. It's coming up, so 9-3. Check it out, check it out, check it out. Completely free to play, not pay to win. That is super important. I feel like that's so important with free-to-play games. Probably the most important thing for me when it comes to free-to-play games. That's the first question I ask anybody. I'm just like, what's the cash shop like? Are they are they hitting me up for money? Do I have to just spend tons of money to even be competitive? And uh, World of Tanks is absolutely not. If you played it a long time ago... I know a lot of people are always like, you know, they used to have things in the cash shop. That changed about a year and a half ago. So if you haven't checked that out in a while, now's the time to go check it out. So go check it out. It's a ton of fun. Absolutely free to play. Keep it on your desktop. I always jump in. Like I said a million times, this is one game that just does not leave my PC because it's just so much fun. Check it out and go over to gboffer.com slash tanks, sign up, make an account. And by supporting uh, this link, going to this link, using this link, you're supporting Game Breaker because they are supporting the show. So we love, love, love Wargaming and love World of Tanks. So support Game Breaker by supporting our sponsors, and that is the best way you can do it. I mean, how, man, how well of a perfect of a sponsor could you want that you get to go play a free game and get free stuff and support Game Breaker and this weekend MMO? <laughs> All that, and it costs you a couple of minutes to download. That's it. And you're going to have fun. Okay. No brainer. And blow things up. No effing brainer. All right, next up. So uh, Wild Stars are going through a little bit of a bumpy road these days. Um, what's going on here? What's what's what, this is this is, there's there's so many there's just so much so many different angles on this. I saw something on massively like today, and they're like <laughs> asking questions and not getting answers. And there's an interview with so, Mike Donatelli and more responding to concerns with the with with from the community and things like that. And what's happening? I mean, so we haven't brought it. We haven't brought it up on Shima recently to talk about. Um, but the, for the backstory for those in here who aren't, who are not playing uh, Wild Story more, haven't been following it, we essentially have a situation where 
players felt like there wasn't anything at Endgame. They felt like the developers were not listening anymore, and a bunch of the top-end staff members have left, whether it was for personal reasons, family reasons, or they some of them have entirely left the industry. Um, so they've lost a lot of their people that were the big names that people knew, and most recent one is Stephen Frost, um, left a few, about a couple weeks ago, and now it's just sort of in a spiral of questions for the fans. And that's where we came to recently, where Donatelli and Moore decided to have an interview with MMORPG.com, regard responding to some of the concerns that are out there. What were some of the what were the, what were some of the major questions that were asked in that interview? Like, uh, and how, and do we have any of the responses of how are they addressing this? Are they are they talking about the awareness and showing that they do know that there's concern? It and that's definitely what it looks like. Um, so one of the first questions that was asked in there was regarding the staff, because that's what everyone's seen, all the staff leaving, mm-hmm. and the staff morale. And if you go to the Glassdoor website, which which is like reviews and stuff by staff members regarding work with the company, there was a lot of negative feedback from there. That morale was down on, from the staff. People were not happy with the situation that worked with the company. And when you see that, that obviously makes the players panic. Um, the response to that was they admitted to it. They said, yes, staff morale has been down. But apparently, like the morale is actually building back up. Supposedly, is what he's saying is it's building back up with the new mega server technology coming with, and which some of the updates they have coming up in the next big patch. Apparently, he says that staff morale looks like it's gonna it's going up because of what's coming, and people are excited about that. And that was and that was one of the big things that people are just scared of is whether if your staff stops working, what game do you have? Yeah, I'm looking here. So MMORPG.com's question is, uh, we've seen some reports uh, from Glassdoor and elsewhere that staff morale isn't great. How would you gauge the mood at the moment and what's being uh, done to improve it? And uh, Moore responds with, I won't lie. It's been a tough time for the studio. The months leading up to launch were an intense time. And now we're in the midst of making some pretty involved changes to our design and our content based on player feedback. That sort of intensity is difficult to sustain for long periods of time, and it can uh, be hard on morale, especially for those who have never gone through a dev cycle before. Uh, that being said, our team here at Carbine is dedicated to making Wildstar the best game it can possibly be for fans, and we are working on some really exciting new content that will be released in the coming months. Everyone here is looking forward to the release of the mega server tech and game improvements in the next update. And beyond that, the accessibility initiatives that address many of the player's concerns. So from a mood standpoint, I think the team is focused and optimistic about the upcoming changes that should improve the game. Um, yeah, I mean, it's gotta be, it's gotta be an interesting thing being on the inside, right? I mean, you, you know, you, 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 you do what you think is right. You put together a team, you, 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 somebody's, you know, driving the bus you think this is the right way going down the road and you go, you got to set everybody on there. Somebody's got to say, we're going in this direction. You got to say, Hey, we're going North. And then you yeah. launch and you know, the players say, Hey, but I want you to go Northeast or maybe even East. <laughs> and now they've, they've, they've Where, got the players are good at that too. Right. And now they've got to respond to that. So now there's a lag time. There's a response time. There's a digestion time. There's, you know, and God, I mean, you guys see the comments that, you know, writing about video games gets you from, from the, from the community. So imagine mm. what these guys go through day in and day out, getting slammed on Twitter and comments. And there's gotta be a point where you're just sitting there at 3 AM, like going like, what am I doing? What am I doing? Why did I, what am I doing here? It's gotta be tough. And it's gotta be it's tough. It's really been a tough time up there when they don't even try to, they didn't try to PR speak the fact that people are having a tough time there that, you know, morale is down. I mean, yeah, he PR'd it up a little bit at the end saying everybody's starting to get excited for what come what's coming, but it, but you know, when when just flat out asked, you know, is, is there you know, has there been a sort of a morale issue up there? He just pretty much says, you know, yeah, there kind of has been. It's it's been tough here. They, he didn't try to say, "No, everybody's fine, you know, it's stress, but we're all used to it." Uh they just flat out said, "Yeah, you know, we're it's uh it's been tough here." And uh, we're trying to make the adjustments necessary to, to, to make it better and to make our game better. And if the game gets better, then, then the work environment obviously will probably become better as well for, for those developers who are sitting there having to deal with that and that constant barrage of tweets and Facebook messages. And I couldn't even imagine uh, what some of those folks have to deal with. Uh, what's, so what's, what's, what do you guys think is the largest 
com- sort of thing coming out of the community right now about Wildstar? Because I, I, I had my concerns early on. Um, I li- so so part of me liked the fact that they were at least taking a beeline towards something and they were going for hardcore, right? And they said they were. Mm-hmm. Like they made trailers about it. They they talked about you know forty man raids. They got the the attunement uh, is the attunement system that was what it was called right the attunement system. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. And, and all that kind of stuff in there that was gonna make it like you got to be hardcore. I had my doubts about that whole system. I, I always said like okay, I think people who remember the early days of World of Warcraft are looking at this through rose colored glasses, and I don't really know. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I think that stuff doesn't exist in World of Warcraft anymore because people don't really want it. It's going to be interesting to see what Wildstar and Carbide can do with this. So how is that whole aspect of the game, the end game, the, the stuff that keeps players playing in MMO, how is that holding up right now? I think, and I, that's what I think, I think the biggest problem that the community is seeing is that the most interesting content, the most fun content that people want to be able to do in the game is a forced group situation where you've got to be grouped up with people and, and then which is okay in some standard level, but they added in a single-player barricade into that, which makes it really confusing, especially when you go to the raids and stuff like that. It's like, here's this, all this group content, but pe- all your people in your group are going to be on separate different levels trying to complete it because they have to do a single-player component in order to, and grind out that in order to even do the group content. And there's just that big split there between lack of single-player, lack of short gameplay session content and you can't even get to the group content because you, the single player stuff is a ridiculous amount of time. Uh, a prime example of uh, players say they want something, they want something different than than what's out there, and then this company's like, okay, fine, we'll give it to you. And at the end of the day, you know, there's just so few people who have the time to put into it that it's not working out like uh, all the people who dreamed of the hardcore, you know, rating scene, what what they imagined it was going to be. It's just not panning out like that. Because nobody has the the time to dedicate to all that attunement that it takes to even get in there in the first place. I've heard the content's amazing, the end game, the raids, and the war plots, and all that is like super awesome stuff. But it's just it it's just too much dedication to getting into it. By the time you get into it, a lot of players are like, oh wow, okay, I've played this game for just hours upon hours, days upon days. I'm ready to go do something else now. This is a little ridiculous. Yeah, I really, if you're looking to play just 30 minutes or an hour, your only option there, if you just want to go in for a short game session for 30 minutes to an hour, your only option is basically to grind out some prestige or whatever it's called for your um, for your faction points and stuff. That's your only option there. The, the, the most boring aspect of it is your only option if you're looking to play a short amount of time. So there's nothing repeatable and no content available for short game sessions. I almost have to wonder. I mean, I, this is like a, a much larger conversation, but oh my God, I, is the MMO genre just completely doomed? Like really, like, let's be honest. I mean, besides World of Warcraft, it seems like almost every other game out there, all you do, if you look at if you look at the entire game space of MMOs, like a show like this does, you don't just like say do a show about a specific game that you play and you're just happy with, which is great. Nothing wrong with that, of course. All we do is talk about the ups and the downs of the roller coaster. Oh my God, this game's not out yet. It's going to be the best game ever. Oh, it came out. I played it for a week. It's the (laughs) worst game ever. That is the cycle we have been in for years. And even Blizzard canceling Titan. We were all waiting for Titan to be like, oh, the game that's going to top world. I don't even know why people are waiting for it. I don't know why. Like, it's just. No, some of these games are making money, so they're they're sustaining. But I feel like in the community of people who watch a show like this, there's there's never gonna the unicorn is not showing up to the party. It's not happening. I, I don't know. I don't know what causes it because we need to change. Obviously, the MMO model that we've known doesn't work. I mean, people try repeated the WoW model over and over every single year. You're not going to repeat the WoW model and have a success, and at the same time, uh, or have a great, huge success that uh, that liberates the entire scene. Um, and we, there's, such a, there's a strong fear, though, to try actually giving something completely different, and part of that is because other people who have tried it have failed, but they like didn't even complete their projects half the time. 
Um, there's so I don't know the funding just doesn't there. It's it's, it's a massive amount to fund an MMO. And so, we, we've got a huge oversaturation in the market right now too. There's so much, and there are little variations here and there that make this game you know fun if you like this and that game fun if you like that. But at the end of the day, at at their core, they're all basically the same thing. And we've got so many of those out there right now that it's just, I don't know, it's just oversaturation is kind of killing the enthusiasm for anything new that comes along because all you can see anymore is how it's just like this other thing that you were playing, so why don't I just play this other thing? And then also you, you, we're slowly getting an influx of these uh, not-quite-MMOs, these multiplayer, online multiplayer games that are bringing a lot of the, the fun aspects of playing with your friends but but taking away some of the not-so-fun aspects of what of why you know a lot of a lot of RPG PC single player players won't play an MMO because because of certain aspects of the way an MMO works with the the grinding and the repetitiveness of it and and multiplayer games are slowly starting to bridge that gap between the the fun that was a single player game and being able to bring your friends into it and, and so I think I'm seeing a lot of people kind of head off in that direction I'm like you know this is actually way more fun than this MMO and I'm still getting to play with all my friends and more and more of those games are coming out as well and you know maybe someday they oversaturate as well, but it just you know lots of combinations MMOs. I think we've probably now don't get me wrong, they're still a huge market. They still make money. You know there's still plenty of games out there to make money. But as far as the the huge oh my god MMOs are the greatest thing ever, I think we're we're sort of past that point. And I think even though World of Warcraft is the exception to the market, it's not the example of what everybody should be. Obviously they just you know some magic dust got sprinkled on they became awesome. <laughs> but as you watch that population decline, you almost get a feel for that still sort of a litmus to the overall MMO population. Yeah. And it, 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 those, so those multiplayer games out there, um, what do they offer? They offer those short gameplay sessions. Yep. They offer that jump in. We got into this open world lobby area, maybe, if that is out there. Get with your friends and go do a session out there real quick. Then you didn't have to travel across the world for 30 minutes, go to something. Um, we didn't have to complete all this other stuff. Really. They make it accessible. And obviously that's what we got into this whole casual ideas. Everything's accessible that has come across, but I think it's what we experience. It. Why do, why am I tired sometimes of playing these theme park MMOs is because I want to play the content that's fun right then and there, as opposed to having to wait um, five weeks before I get to the to the actual main content of the game. Like I yep. want that main content of the game, the actual purpose of playing the game, up front, not at the end game aspect of it, not at the when you ground when you grinded your boredom out. Yeah, and the whole multiplayer stuff that you're talking about, Troy. I think you're absolutely right. You, you know, with seeing all these games kind of bridge that gap and kind of mold into the two, I have to be, I'm playing much more. Much more of my gaming time is spent in games like that now, than they are in full virtual world sort of MMOs. You know, games. You know, say what you want right now. I know this type of crew is super hardcore, and Destiny is now the worst game ever. But um, <laughs> games like Destiny. Uh, games even like Forza, like I, I was, we were talking about that. And I was, I mean, no, the, the, some of the components that they have built in wouldn't necessarily totally work in an MMO because it's a racing game. But at the same time, the way they are doing things with multiplayer is just awesome. Like it's just, it makes it so seamless. And like you, you kind of hit the nail on the head. Is that I get to play with my friends and uh, I'm just having fun. So it's kind of a quick fix sort of thing, but I don't yeah, know. My, my uh, group so, of friends and I, when we're looking for something to play together now, we go to Steam before we start looking up MMOs nowadays. Yeah, you just uh, look you know, for co-op games. Ago, you like exactly search co-op. Yeah, we, we search co-op on Steam before we go looking for a new MMO to try. And, and, and you're getting more and more exactly options, right? Option. I mean, you got Sunset Overdrive coming, uh, on Xbox so coming, many. eight eight player co-op. Um, you got Borderlands, the prequel uh, coming out. It's going to have co-op. Um, it's almost in every game now. So unless you're, you know, you're really looking for that 50, you know, 100 person guild kind of thing. There's a lot of other options out there for you. Well, one MMO that definitely, I think this MMO got, I think the, the peeps that try and almost got caught off guard how many people are loving this game. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> I don't think they really knew the extent of how many people were going to just love Arcage. Um, well, the hype train seemed to have peaked like a couple of years ago, and then I yeah. think everybody, you got the feeling that everybody's like, well, it's not coming, so we're not going to be as excited about it. But then when it hit, everybody's like, oh, yeah, this game, I wanted to try this. Boom, let's all jump in. 
So I think it caught kind of everybody off guard. I thought that the excitement for this game had died off too. I wasn't expecting anywhere near the sort of outpouring for this game that it got when it launched. So try on, uh, yeah, it's live now. Obviously, we've been talking about it for a couple of weeks now, but uh, two million registered users are what they're reporting. Um, they got twenty-one live servers going. So there's some issues with getting live servers up, but that's that's going pretty well now. Um, you know, they've also been dealing with you know the, the normal issues like most MMOs are like bots and things. They've been banning a ton of bots, tons of bots, squashing that stuff quick. Um, yeah, I mean, for I feel like this is the MMO really for people who are. I definitely don't want to say older. Don't want to say older, but I want to say veteran MMO players looking for like maybe <laughs> something that's like new, but kind of has a lot of the components of the old older style MMOs that we kind of loved back in the day, the SWGs, the early EverQuest. Like it's got a lot of those like feelings to me. Like it's got a lot of that virtual world stuff going on. Um, but it seems like a lot of young, young kids are also taken to it that, uh, you know, maybe haven't played a game like this before. They played WoW. I think it's very different than WoW. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If you're looking for a WoW clone, this is not it. It has tab targeting combat. That's uh, about it. <laughs> there, there's, there's like some dungeons and some, you know, like the, there's like dungeons and quests, I guess. Uh, de definitely, definitely a lot of different gameplay in Arcade. Uh, we're coming up on the end. Of, they're coming up on the end, end, up on the end of your free month of patron status. If you got that, to see what happens after this. I was curious about that. How much? Uh, because you know that big land rush in the beginning, and it was you couldn't find a place to put your house or your farm or anything, man. If you didn't like log into the first five minutes that thing went live, you were screwed. Now I'm curious to see how many people re up that patron status and how much uh, how much land suddenly becomes available. And like they, you know, get ready. There may be like a second land rush coming on here. Maybe when that, when that thirty days kind of expires. Well, check it out. So uh, people in the chat room are asking about Arcade. Yeah, it's absolutely free. There's no monthly fee. There's no uh, monthly fee at all. So go check it out. And uh, reported of two million players playing. So definitely if a lot of people. If you haven't tried Arcade, just uh, just download it. It's free to play. Download it and give it a shot. It's uh, it's definitely worth downloading and trying out. Yeah, it's a new hotness. It's definitely the new hotness right now. So it's still super hot. Uh, game I know Mr. Justin Kennedy here enjoys here and again. The Smite. So they're having a world championship and they're having a million dollar over over a million dollar prize pool. Get into big numbers with Smite. Smite Smite just I, Smite's no longer a small game. No, it's, I was just gonna say this is not a small game anymore, is it? Like they just keep steadily increasing um, month over month. It seems like. Yeah, they are basically the when it comes to mobas, or they are even probably I guess in esports in general right now. It was one of the the number three game out there. Like you've got League of Legends and Dota out there for big prizes and stuff, but Smite's you're going to have the biggest prizes in Smite right behind it. Yeah, and they're really getting yeah. behind the esports aspect of it with these tournaments and stuff. I mean, a million bucks. A million bucks up for grabs. No, that's that's not bad for like the, the first big championship go around here. Um, I'm excited about it. I'm looking forward to, to watching the championships. And this uh, is already a real championship, to too. Yeah. It's not like this isn't just, this isn't just the NA. It's, it's a real championship. From they around the world, China and everything, play, competing in this. Yeah, it's going to be Atlanta, Georgia. So you got two two North American teams, two European, two China, one from Brazil, and one from Hispano America. Five regions, eight teams. Atlanta, Georgia, from January 9th through the eleventh at the Cobb Performing Arts Center. So, I assume all of this will be live streamed as well, of course. That may actually end up being my first in-person live esports event. Oh, that's that's just, that's just a few hours for me here. That that's doable right there. That would be that would be fun to go sit in an arena during an esports event. That would be awesome. It was. Yeah. I haven't been. It's, it's, it's that's the only one I've been to for esports, and um, other than the one at BlizzCon last year for StarCraft. But as far as for esports goes, it was pretty fun going to their launch tournament. So they're probably going to be bigger. Going even more crazy with this one, so it should be interesting. They're giving a run for the money. They're giving a run for the money. They're doing, I wouldn't even say they're giving a run. I say they are in, they are in the running at this point. 
Like, there's no doubt about it. Smite is here to stay, for sure. So. I've got a friend who hates League of Legends. I mean, he hates it with everything he is. And he loves is so Smite. addicted to Smite right now. <laughs> he plays it by himself. Like, none of the rest of us are playing right now because we're, like, tied up in, like, Arcade and Shadow of Mordor and stuff. He is playing Smite by himself. Cannot stand any other MOBA he's ever seen. <laughs> Love Smite. So, I mean, there you go. If you're not a League of Legends fan, but you're interested in MOBAs and, and, and kind of the gameplay elements involved... Um, Check out Smite. It, he, the 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 third person I think really got him. He said it reminds him of our old World of Warcraft rating days. With with he feels like he's moving in and out fights and you know I gotta say if I have, if I have a, things are happening around him so he he loves it. I agree. Like I kind of gotta say if I have a choice between playing a game of League or playing Smite, I'll prefer I prefer Smite. I, I and it is a lot. It has to do with the perspective. I, I love the perspective of it, and it does. I think it's because I've played MMOs for so many years. It just feels so natural to me to then just jump in and play the game. And I don't know. I do. I I, I think it's a great game. It is. It, is. it really is a good game. Yeah. I, I can't. I can't say that it's not. <laughs> All right. So I'm a uh, guy. Smite's a good game. We still can, we still got a bit more to talk about today, but first I want to talk about our sponsor for this section of the show, and that is audible if you guys have not signed up for audible as of yet i got you i got you want to hook you up with a free 30-day trial and a free audiobook just by going to audible.com slash game breaker and of course by supporting our sponsors audible you support this show and game breaker so help us keep going and making shows like this just go to audible.com slash game breaker sign up today make an account and download a free audiobook and uh, we were talking about the blizzard stuff earlier They've got a ton of great World of Warcraft books. Uh, they've got War Crimes, Dawn of the Aspects, Vulgin Shadows of the Horde. Let's listen to some Shadows of the Horde for a second. Though that was his primary line of reasoning, the whispers and tutting from the two Chang sisters gave him further cause to hold back. The two of them were old enough to remember when Lu Lang had first departed Pandaria, or so they said. Though their fur ran much more to white than black, save where they darkened it around their eyes, Chen assumed they weren't quite that old. They'd spend that all is the World of Warcraft Vulgin Shadows of the Horde, which could be yours absolutely for the low, low, low price of free. Yep. Just go to audible.com slash gamebreak up, make an account. Offers good only for new accounts, of course. But go over, make an account, and uh, download the app. You put it on your smartphone, your iOS device, your iPad, your iPhone, your uh, Android, Kindle Fire, pretty much whatever device you have, there's an app for it. And pick a free audio book, and there's countless others, a bunch of Star Wars books, Game of Thrones, you name it. There's tons of fantasy, sci-fi, really good stuff. Check it out. I love audible.com. I've been a fan for many, many, many of a year is that right? Absolutely many, many, many of a year. <laughs> I'm plenty <Aww>. addicted. <laughs> All right, last of this week. Twitch adds complete transparency policy changes. So, Twitch trying to make the gamers happy. I don't think they figured out yet the gamers will never be happy. <laughs> just just in, in our DNA. It doesn't really matter what you do, Twitch. Nobody's going to be happy. Now, now they just give them an excuse to move on to some other topic to be mad about. Yeah. So they, they want to have complete transparency. They simply put, uh, they say that we want uh, complete transparency and unwavering authenticity with all content and promotions that have a sponsor relationship. So what are they, what are they referring to here? What is, what is the main thing that they are trying to combat? Well, I think one of the things they might, this has come up on the heels on is shadow of Mordor. Regarding them um, paying yeah, the, the early access review policy, yeah, 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 their early access review policy requiring you to give positive feedback and stuff like that. So um, as far as the streams and stuff, they're basically almost like saying that if a channel is actually a sponsored stream, that channel is going to say it when you are looking at channel view and you're searching channels and stuff. You're going to you see a channel and it says it's going to have on it that this is sponsored. How they figure that out, I don't know. That's what uh, I, that was my next question. Is how how do they how how do they know that? I have no idea. I guess it's just if you if you've put it out there and put that disclaimer up there, if it comes out that you were sponsored, you can't get in trouble. Hey, actually, <laughs> so know. here's what I see, and I'm looking at this now. Um, today, you'll start seeing a new graphic on the front video carousel, a sponsor tag. This this denotes when a stream is sponsored by a brand. So here's something I see happening. 
obviously, for Twitch to get some more money, is say Shadow of Mordor wants to have their game being focused more on Twitch. Well, they can pay Twitch $100 and say, we want his stream focused up there on the front page. We're going to sponsor his stream on the front page of Twitch. And I think that's what that partially is there. It's like literally a hundred dollars because I'll, 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 I'll start promoting Game Breaker right <laughs> yeah, now. I'll, no game, yeah, well, I'll, I'll stay, we'll sure stay it's sponsored twenty four seven. It's probably you know is it Super Bowl cost. Maybe. It probably is Super Bowl cost. Let's see this. So this is transparency and sponsored content in promotion. We launched Twitch over three years ago when the uh, video ecosystem was a different industry than it is today. Uh, we've seen. And the continuing rise of gaming content on web video platforms, a host of media companies which cater to that industry, and the increasingly big dollar deals with major consumer brands who leverage gaming personalities to market their products and games. Uh, let's get down to the meat of this. An increasingly large, uh, let's see, blah, blah, blah. for example, an influencer campaign will feature a well-known broadcaster playing a newly released game. We all know this. Okay. Sometimes, though, because of a lack of... Tra okay, so we're getting it. Sometimes, though, because of a lack of clear, uh, of, a cl of clear best practices and shifting regulatory guidelines coupled with a sometimes less than transparent sponsor relationship, these kinds of campaigns have become a bit of a dark corner in the industry, and that's bad for everyone. For some further context... Uh, blah, 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 blah. So I, I still don't... Yeah, I don't... So for viewers, you will know what is paid for and what is not. All copy and graphics attached to sponsored content, Twitch front page social media promotion will be clearly identified. Um, so I don't, this is I don't, more I, related to Twitch's, Twitch's content itself more than it is on an individual so, streamer so basis. So the only, yeah, so the only way they will know this, this is, this is when a, I may be wrong because I'm reading it fairly quickly, but the way I'm interpreting this quickly is that this is for when companies are approaching Twitch directly and saying, Hey, Twitch, we want to feature this. We want to get this up on top here, or we want to get a bunch of streamers streaming our game. Can you guys facilitate this? And then Twitch is the middleman to get in between the streamers and all that stuff. Okay. That makes sense. And yeah, then Google they will, the same thing. and then they will put that this is sponsored content. Okay, sure. So if, what it doesn't do, what it doesn't do, which is, I, I don't know this whole, this whole debate about like, you know, the transparency. And so, I mean, I, I, yeah, I guess there's really nothing wrong with transparency. I mean, television has been doing it for years. People just don't know about it. Radio has been doing it for years. Like if you listen to radio, there's 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 news packages that sound like news packages that are completely put together, and it's a commercial. It just sounds like a news package. Mm -hmm. TV's been doing the same thing for year years. Um, if you don't believe me, just Google video news release. There you go. Google video news release. Go read about it. You've been subjected to these things since the inception of media. So I kind of don't know how I feel about it. Like, I feel like, you know, it's becoming a thing, which I guess transparency is always good. It really isn't a bad thing about it, but it's been going on forever. So well, good for Twitch. Good for them are all the billions of dollars. There you go. Justin Kennedy, you've been streaming a ton. Where can people find your channel? Uh, Twitch.tv slash JK Kennedy without the TV part. So just JK Kennedy. There I'm, you go. I'm actually going to be streaming Sticks Master of Shadows after this. Ooh, I'm going to watch that. I got to work cool. those crap. <laughs> check it out, check it out, check it out. And uh, Troy Blackburn, follow him on Twitter at Noobfridge, N O B F R I D G E, and check out all his great work over on GameBreaker.tv, as well as writing uh, stuff on BlackTriangle.com. How are you doing? It? You just, nice, nice little mix-up. You like the stories, don't you? It's fun. It's fun. Like, like a lot of that stuff, it's just fun to write that stuff. It's just interesting weird stuff it's just weird stuff like and nobody's saying this is this is 100 percent true we're just like look at this oh no this it's is true really weird check it out no it's true it's all true it's all true it's true what's that ufos caught on camera dude this video freaked me out this news when they're when they're 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 picking up this ebola victim in a body bag and they're about to cart him away this dead person with ebola they're about to cart him away and live on camera he wakes up no joke. It's freaky. I mean, he was, obviously, he wasn't really dead. 
ever. The zombie but, apocalypse has begun. But holy crap, they're picking people up in the street thinking that they're dead and they're not even dead. Go check it out. Go to blacktriangle.com. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Gary Gannon. You can follow, go to Black Triangle and you can follow the Twitter, Facebook, all that kind of good stuff. And like I said, uh, we really appreciate if you share any of the stories that you like over there and help us grow as quickly as possible because we want to get the word out and let people know that what's going on. Um, I'm also streaming a bunch of stuff kind of randomly at night, mostly Forza. So follow that. Um, couple new shows on the on the Twitch channel. You got Battle Talk. You've got um, there's a new Elder Scrolls Online show with Larry, and of course you got the Republic. We're gonna get those in the rotation. Put those all, everything up on the schedule for you guys, so you guys can follow that. And of course we do Twimo on Thursdays here at five. Come over for that live show. And uh, Black Triangle, the show will be coming really soon as well. We'll hit you up with that with a day and a time of what we do. It's probably going to be Mondays. I know the show is going to be Mondays. We're probably doing something a little bit different than how the distribution on that show is. So I'll have more info later on and stuff like that. So not really sure. We're definitely not live streaming on Twitch. That would make no sense. So have a great weekend. See you next week. Peace out, homies.